Welcome to Edina. With us today, we have R. Raj Gopal, editor at large at the Telegraph India. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Edina. You have decades of experience in journalism. You have seen over the years how media was, what media is now. We have criticized present day media, it is Godi media, it is sold out media. And over the years, what do you see as change in media? Not since 2014 onwards, even over the years. And um, do you think the advent of social media is beneficial or has it been detrimental? with lot of disinformation, misinformation being there. How do you see this and is it a, it's a, also a challenge for journalists? Yeah, like, like you said, see, media did not become what it is in 2014. Yes. Media was always owned by uh, big business or big capitalist, uh, capitalism, big capital or by, like I said, the man who has always been like that, even before independence. And uh, But the very, very big change I see it uh, till 2014 or maybe a little before that, yes. Media, all these uh, media, wherever biases, discrimination, all these used to come, that was driven by self-interest. That they, this particular media organization, they may have an interest in it, you know. They may say, project a particular project, saying this is very good. Then later we realize that they may have a stake in that, a real estate project. Mm -hmm. uh, or they may suddenly, we see them suddenly becoming very environment friendly and opposing a, somebody's investment plan. Then later we realize that that is by a rival business group. So, so there was always an element of self-interest in it. Mm -hmm. Now, what is very worrying and very, very dangerous, I think, is there's no self-interest. They're not making any gains. Which means some inner uh, something they had bottled up all these uh, years that they are finding an opportunity to c come out and they are taking a stand now to support communal forces. So what is that something? If you since we, I don't have any other, we don't have any other. So we have to say that the communal bias and the class bias and the caste bias, which was inherent in the media in those days, that has finally found an avenue to express itself, and that is what is happening now. And which is it's very dangerous because if it is self-interest, we can always tackle that. Uh, because you 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 f give them the con if you do this, this is what going to happen the consequences. Mm -hmm. But now there is no consequences because they are completely protected by. It. They will not face any consequences. And probably some of them must be making gains also by following this uh, communal agenda, the writing agenda. So that is. But most people I realize they are not making any gains. They they are just doing it because they want to do it. You know, which is a very very dangerous. Uh, but that is about the mainstream media, I am saying. Uh, what about social media? So I do not uh, think uh, there is uh, uh, disinformation, fake news, all these are any, these are valid uh, reason for uh, controlling or uh, the social media. Social media is very, very, because, see, lo look at uh, the last 10 years, 8 years, or uh, 6 years, the biggest stories have all come from uh, social media. Then the mainstream media has followed it up. Uh, you know, it is always like that. So many stories otherwise would never have been um, um, told, you know. See that UP, that student who was, uh, one Muslim student was slapped by the teacher and all. Yes. These stories would never get reported from the media. No news agency, we had, we have very, very big news agencies with so much on their tongue. They did not report it first. So, so uh, disinformation, fake news, it should be unregulated. But I know efforts are being made to regulate it. But uh, because the internet, it's a, it's, a, it's a free place. That freedom should be retained. If you don't do that, um, again, if, uh, what happened to print media, it will happen on, in social media also. So, on in the name of fake news, disinformation, those are very my and another thing is fake news is also we often over interpret. See, those who those who go those who go to create trouble after seeing fake news, they know very well it's fake. Mm -hmm. It is not that see anybody who actually cares for information, they will not be seeing some uh, fake video and then going out and throwing stones at your neighbor. They do it because they want to do it and they are getting an excuse to do it. That's why it is not because of fake news they do it. So, Telegraph, Telegraph is famous for its eye-grabbing headlines. So, was it a conscious decision on the part of editorial board to have this kind of a paper 
when was it taken and how is it received overall? Um, telegraph always, uh, not just Telegraph, all newspapers in India used to f give uh, focus, give a lot of attention, pay a lot of attention to headlines at one time. Then um, for some reason, I think it's because of uh, um, uh, that there was a sudden interest in sports and uh, show business news and because of that political news took a back seat and then all the headline skills, everything went into giving good sport, when, what you call unusual sports headlines, unusual, so the all, all unusual entertainment headlines about superstars and all that and politics, uh, it took a back seat, that is what happened then, but when in, uh, I became the editor in 2016, there was also a new challenge, uh, the television already was very strong in India, the television news, then social media was, uh, on, online media was rising mm -hmm. and then newspapers usually, uh, unless we have exclusive news, which is not possible every day, uh, the news we are giving is actually 20, almost 17, 18 hours late because already online media, the, if something very important, Supreme Court judgment or something happens in the morning, uh, within within minutes actually people, uh, especially English readers, all readers, they get to know about it. So what do we, so why should anyone read a newspaper the next day? That it's an important, and like I told you, um, uh, unless you have very exclusive news and very arresting news, very important exclusive, which is not possible for a newspaper to do it every day. So then with the available and another big, uh, because of the explosion, information explosion, especially because of internet, uh, newspapers, I think average reader spends not more than four minutes in a new, with the newspaper. Then if you, if some, if a person spends four minutes, we should consider ourselves lucky. Most, especially youngsters don't, uh, they just look at it and then uh, what we increasing feedback we got was people are seeing newspaper, not reading it, you know. Mm -hmm. So there was a, so to make it visually appealing, there was a was thing for another thing. If we get three minutes, then w there are so much, so many things in newspaper and if you, then every, every page is fighting for attention. Mm -hmm. And page one is also an important paper page, but over time we have noticed that people are going first, uh, nobody is even looking at the front page news because front page news is already familiar news. They've already seen it on television the day before or online media. So it's a familiar thing. So people hardly used to, look at uh, the page one, they go straight to sports news or their special interest, city news, which are nice. entertainment, especially entertainment. And we have, we have a very, very strong entertainment section called T2. Okay. So we were actually fighting with, internally we were fighting with T2. See, if you have a, a Shah Rukh Khan and if you have some politician, Shah Rukh Khan in the entertainment section and the politician on front page, nobody will look at the front page. <laughs> so that is why we needed to, we needed to somehow grab the attention and that is how slowly uh, they had so it was a conscious decision in that sense but it was not this campaigning the kind of campaigning uh, style of journalism uh, that uh, headlining that happened because of the way the country also at that time took a very very decisive right turn and we thought that as a newspaper it's our responsibility to oppose it and so it, it is a mix of uh, the to give big headlines was a conscious decision but the nature of the headlines that evolved over time as a reaction to what is happening in, in the country. So this was since? Um, see, it was, like I told you, Telegraph was launched in 1982. It was always uh, known for its headlines, uh, especially when uh, Indira Gandhi was assassinated. Uh, uh, the uh, headline, uh, the, the founding editor MJ Akbar gave it, I think. Yeah. It was uh, Indira assassinated, nation wounded. That was that. So it was a very. Uh, we always that used style to. Style was style there. was always uh, that culture was there. So it is. It is nothing that I invented or it, the credit should not go to me. It credit should go to the newsroom culture of the uh, newspaper. And like I said, it was nothing unique about Telegraph. Also, Indian newspapers, all newspapers, not just Indian news, newspapers, all because headline is the biggest thing we have got, the biggest weapon we have. Um, so we. I, my belief is that we should use. It is a maximum effect every time. But it's a credit that in the age of social media, yeah. the news clip that is shared is from Telegraph headline. Yeah, it, it so happened that, uh, see, again, if you give something in very big font and this thing, it's always reader friendly. It's, it's a few words. Usually it's a, just a few words and an image. So it is that way, it is tailor made for uh, social media also. But again, I'm saying it is not uh, consciously made because I am not on social media at all. Because I, um, I, but so it, is, it just happened like that. So it, that it is. So next question is, uh, since we are talking of headlines in this age of social media, 
how much time do you spend in creating these headlines? Does it take a lot of time? See, you, usually what happens is the newspaper, as technology improved, everything happened. Uh, we had assumed that uh, it will give us, we will save a lot of time. Because earlier we didn't, we had to, so printing used to take a lot of time to make a block and all that. So we used to work in a very narrow um, window. Of the, but then later we realized as technology uh, improved, actually we did not, the time actually shrank because they started printing early then. So that earlier training of having to do things very fast, that always, that, that is actually a problem of this uh, early burnout in newsrooms also because the pressure is very, very intense, the deadline pressure. Though I think television is much more, so I should not be saying that we have more pressure than television, but by nature, the, any deadline driven business is very, 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 there's a, there will be pressure. So headlines, usually what happens is, it is not that we decide on a headline and do the story. It's always the stories have to drive the headline. Otherwise, the headline will never work. You can't have a headline first and then a story. So when the story happens, what happens? There's generally a discussion among, uh, it is not a formal kind of discussion. We, people just say what they feel about something. So often that is how headlines uh, come into being. When, when, when from the people, uh, my colleagues' reaction, I can make out this is what they, that has struck them, you know. It may not be as something uh, very, poli very, very ideological, very political, but often the first reaction of when something happens, the first reaction gives us, uh, mm, uh, I will give an example, in, during the Shabirimala, are you familiar with the Shabirimala controversy in Kerala? So uh, it, there was a, one particular day, there was a call, band called by the BJP or supported by the BJP. And in a district called Palakkad, a uh, lot of uh, these band supporters, they stood in the middle of the road and started th throwing stones at the police. So there was a picture, it's an, it's an outer exclusive picture. Everybody had the picture, PTA agency sent the picture. So the, it was, so the, when the picture landed on our screen, one of my colleagues uh, said that there's a good picture from Kashmir, people throwing stones. So then I looked and I realized, because I am from Kerala, I realized it's not Kashmir, it's Kerala. Yeah. But what my colleague said is correct. It looks exactly like Kashmir. Mm. The, uh, when the, the students used to, youths used to throw stones at the you know, army. Mm. Because of the, then I realized, that, so we, that day our headline was, if this happened in Kashmir, we will call them terrorists. If it, if it happened in Kerala, we are calling them devotees. You know, you know, so uh, that, so what I'm saying, that it, it came as a reaction to a person's first reaction, it looks like, you know. So this is what was happening. In Kashmir, we would have opened fire on uh, those protesters and called them terrorists, whereas in Kerala, you know, we will say that these are uh, devotees of uh, a, a deity. So that, it, 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 so that is often headlines come from the way, so if you are very, a, a, a desk or your colleagues who react to things and you have that kind of a culture, it always helps uh, in producing the paper. So it's often, like I told you, it happens on its own. There's no, so we don't have a formula. So Telegraph, as you said, 2016 onwards has taken this uh, conscious decision yes. because the way politics of the country is also yes. going. Yes. And uh, probably Telegraph is probably only one of the one of the mainstream print papers who have taken such a stand i uh, know other papers also take but i think consistently if you look at the f frequently and consistently i think yeah telegraph we can say that so, so the turning point was in two, why 2016 because that was the time uh, JNU police went inside JNU and then uh, also other thugs went in and beat up uh, Kanaya and the Kanaya was also beaten up in the court room. So yes. that was something uh, I, I come from a very uh, very very political state Kerala. There also student clashes happened, but I have never seen uh, police behaving the way they did that. Barging into university. Barging in and after that, the, the government uh, supporting uh, that action. So that is how it, it began as a reaction to that. Then from there, it was it steadily increased uh, criticism of the government. Uh, so Telegraph is based in West Bengal. It's a yes. West Bengal-based paper. Mm -hmm. And uh, how is the coverage vis-a-vis -vis West Bengal and rest of the country? And uh, does this decision of uh, how to cover national news and uh, local news, how is it uh, decided? Yeah, this is also, like I said, it was made easy for me because when the Telegraph was launched, we also have a very, very f famous and it's an institution, there's a paper called Anandapasa Patrika. Yes. We belong to the same group. 
So when Telegraph was launched, there was a conscious decision. I was not there at that time, but there was a conscious decision by the ma management that it it should not be treated as a uh, English translation of the Bengali newspapers. So it should be it should be a completely different. It should be an identity. That is why it was decided that Telegraph will focus on national news, whereas important state news may be one page. And the, in fact, the, at the beginning, Telegraph never used to carry any local news on the front page. Oh. To be, it was it, so it was a national newspaper being published from a local place you know it's a uh, the paper was character was national but its location was local okay. so, so that way that's it was the unique feature uh, uh, because that was no, that was deliberately done because we had a very strong english newspaper the in bengal when telegraph was called statesman it's a statesman. statesman is a very big institution and statesman english was considered very good the language and all that so there was a campaign uh, by some critics of uh, the Ananda Basa group saying that this English newspaper Telegraph is a Bengali translation. So deliberately, that's why uh, Telegraph didn't have any. Uh, the MJ Akbar was not a Bengali, the person who founded it. I am not a Bengali, and we have we have very diverse uh, people from all over India work for, for. So it was a conscious decision because of that. State news always used to take a back seat. We did not give that much importance to state news, the national. But it's not that when Nandigram or something like that. Obviously, then it will become big. So, this was also a criticism uh, when uh, we started criticizing Narendra Modi so much. People used to ask, why not? Uh, why we are not doing it, Mamata? But that is also again. I will not uh, say it is because we did not focus on uh, local news. That was also a conscious decision. On uh, that only I am responsible for that because I felt that when you have uh, uh, such a danger like a, like a uh, communal danger like Modi and BJP on one side. And Mamada Bank George, the, the definitely the bigger danger is Narendra Modi. So it was a very conscious decision. I drew a lot of criticism um, uh, for taking that. And I think the paper also became unpopular in Calcutta because of that stand. Uh, because our readership is, like I told you, it's Hindu, upper class, upper caste, uh, this thing. So they, naturally there was a bad, but I refused to uh, change it. Because I still think that I took the right decision because when you have an elephant uh, coming, attacking your home, and a ma mouse attacking your home, who will you? You there's no point uh, going after the mouse. You have to go after the elephant. You have to defend against the elephant, the bigger danger. That is. So this decision is advantageous having national news from a state. Yeah. That also gives you a like outside focus at central politics, yeah. and you also cover the state uh, coverage. But uh, so you already covered that thing. I was going to ask, how is it perceived in West Bengal uh, by West Bengal uh, intelligentsia? Uh, uh, see, we don't have that. You have a very robust survey system. We don't have that. <laughs> uh, so we don't, so we. I have to go by what uh, um, uh, the feedback from the management. So management side usually uh, it is a marketing uh, 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 marketing circulation, market, also. Ma circulation, circulation marketing. Market. They 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 give us the feedback. We don't have very strong. There have been reader uh, meetings and all that, and I, it's my problem also. I have not been regular in attending such meetings because of uh, usually these meetings are because people have to work, do work in the. So the readers usually will be free in the evening, but evening we have to produce the paper also. So I have not been able to attend. So general feedback that was given to me is that. Our readers are very unhappy uh, that we are not criticizing Mamata Banerjee mm -hmm. as much as we are criticizing Modi. But my reply to, but I cannot obviously write an editorial on that. My reply to the marketing colleagues was, uh, it is a conscious decision on my part because I think at this, when there is a crisis, in normal times I will take that criticism, it, you should have to be neutral. But when the country is facing a crisis like this, they cannot, we cannot be neutral. How can we be, be yes. neutral uh, in that? Uh, we hear it very often from our uh, colleagues in other publication that uh, a journalist should always be neutral. Yeah. And uh, we also say, how can you, st we have to decide when is the time to be neutral. Yeah, we are not living you, in normal times. Fellow, when your neighbor is lynched, when your fellow citizens are attacked for what they eat, what they wear, how can you uh, remain neutral? That is the most criminal activity. You are being a criminal if you remain neutral. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Raj Gopal, sir, for uh, coming and interacting with us. I think it's a lesson for journalists young journalists especially to learn from uh, your experience and legacy and uh, will continue to look forward to the headlines of Telegraph. Thank you all for uh, listening to us and for similar news and discussions like this, please follow and subscribe edina.com. Thank you.